can um, cater quite a few. So hopefully some of the insight from some uh, very good franchisors up here will, um, will help you. So first question to you guys is for the, the would-be franchisors, what advice would you give to them in your experience at that stage? I imagine, you know, many people have thought of a good idea in the sector of looking at franchising. It's kind of their default method of growth because everyone else does it. Who, anyone want to um, take this? Well, I think, um, I think you've got to analyse your business, really, and you do have to analyse it and make sure that franchising is the right route for you. Um, I know with the slight differences within this sector, it, some people look at licensing, some people look at a, you know a joint venture or, or different things. Um, I think in the children's sector, if you are passionate about your brand and you want that brand to be taught exactly the same way um, throughout your franchise network, then franchising is the right way forward for you. But you need to do that research. You need to make sure that you've... Um, not only for your own local area, but make sure that your intellectual property is in place, that your trademarks are in place. So really, just don't rush it. It's, uh, it, it's got to be done properly. Like Ian and uh, Emily spoke about earlier, the joint venture that they're doing, Reading Fairy and Baby Sensory together, they're not gonna rush it because they want to make sure everything's in place. And I think that's the same especially in the children's market, because we do hold such a strong responsibility, especially in the preschool market, this is a child's first experience of something in that sector. So for example, for, for Diddy Dance, that is potentially the first experience a child is gonna get have of a dance class. And that would stay with them potentially into adulthood as to how they view dance and whether it's fun or whether it's too strict. So don't rush it, take your time, make sure it's done properly, make sure all your processes and policies and, and everything is in place and seek advice. Yeah. You've got to speak to other franchisors, join a network such as eWIF or, um, or speak to a franchise consultant and just make sure you do it properly and your legals, that's where your biggest cost will be. Uh, your legal franchise agreement um, and any other documents uh, in place for, for legal, that will be your biggest cost, but that's your biggest investment and most worthwhile one as well. Yeah, yeah I completely echo that. I, I would say do it right, not quickly. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, I've mentioned this a couple of times today to people, you've got to see franchising as a 10, 15, 20 year business model. It's not a, a quick fix. Yeah. And take advice, that's the main mm. thing from get a mentor or somebody who you know, to, to help you. It's really important to take advice. I right from the beginning. I didn't. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I started a long time ago. <laughs> and it wasn't really a Yeah. Ideally from someone who's actually yeah. franchised. Mm. Yeah. I, I think also you need to make sure you've got the, the financial resources. Don't mm. think that franchising is, is a way to sort of, you, you don't have to invest as much. You've still got some investment there and you've got to make sure you put a good team together behind you. And I've got a great team behind, behind <laughs> us at Tumble Tots, some of them are here today. But, um, but yeah, I think that, you know, that, that is, is an important thing because I do think some people think, oh, you know, uh, can't afford to invest in, in a new premises myself, but oh, get somebody else there. You can't think like that. You, 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 you're building a brand, you're building a team, and you've got to make sure you've got a good team in place to support the training that you're going to need to give as well to the people, and obviously the ongoing business advice and guidance that you need to give. Because you, you can't cut corners in, in franchising. The franchisees, it's the same with your franchisee recruitment. You can't rush that as well because these are potentially people that you've got to work with for five years. So if you cut corners on your legals or you cut corners on your recruitment and you just take on people because you're really excited that they believe in your brand, you're stuck with those people for five years and they might not be the right person for your brand. Um, and they could damage your brand yeah, as well. They really could. So I, think, I think, yeah, on that, I think you need to make sure that you're completely upfront about everything, about what's involved. Mm -hmm. Because I th I'm sure anybody that's run a small business knows how much hard work they have to put into it to get it off the ground. And unfortunately, it's probably not nine till five, I would imagine, for most people. So um, you really do need to um, make sure that they're fully aware of what they'll be getting themselves into. Because I think 
quite often they'll come to the decision themselves that it's not right for them and they'll, they'll disappear if you've been completely open up for again and like mark said it's it, you know you've got to be honest it's not a get rich quick scheme for them either it, it, it's going to take them time to build the business it's not it's not, not going to happen overnight and some people just want a job they don't really want a business because mm -hmm. they don't really understand what it's like running a business so you have to make it clear to them and they have to think it through quite carefully. I think you've got to have your mindset in the, uh, in the way that you're awarding mm -hmm. franchises. Mm. You're not selling them. You, don't have to, you shouldn't have to sell it in so much that you're trying to convince them to, to come with you. They have to believe in what you do, have passion for what you do. Yeah. You're awarding them franchise. And as part of that um, process, in most people, the way they franchise is they build up a business idea of their own, and then they franchise that off. What do you think changes from just running your own business locally to then becoming a franchise or It's a com lot. <laughs> completely different. <laughs> completely <laughs> different mindset. Yeah. It's, um, running your own business can, you know, it has a different set of challenges. You know, when you're taking on franchisees, you've got to work with them, you've got to mentor them. Mm -hmm. it, there can be difficult situations. Mm -hmm. um, and it is totally different. And sometimes I found over the years people take the focus off the local business mm -hmm. and that can sometimes take a hit because they're focusing on something on something new, they suddenly think they're going to get an extra five hours in the day <coughs> to do something when they're not. You know, if you're maxed out now, why will franchising suddenly give you more time in the day? But it is exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're not trying to put you off. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want any exciting. more franchisors, as it know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's a whole different yeah, skill set. Different. But I was used yeah. to teaching dance. I wasn't used to managing and motivating, yeah. inspiring and supporting oh. adults. So yeah. it's a very different, different mindset. Yeah. yeah, it could be great. And what's your opinion on your own franchise, do you carry on running it or do you sell it off? It's flexible. Yeah. There are advantages. Ways, yeah. If you're running your own business, your own business, you can try new ideas before you roll it out to your network. So that's really, really useful. And you understand the day-to-day -day challenges that your franchises are facing. However, on the other side, you fall between two stools. And if you, if you have franchisees, you have to support them and put time into that. And if you're running your own business, if it's a small business, you make one morning a week, it's fine. But if you have 600 children coming weekly, I would suggest you get a manager in place to run that business so that you can focus on your franchising business because you have an, an obligation to any of your franchisees that you take on to, to support them. And you have to be there for, for them. And it's not fair to take them on and just leave them. It's about playing to your strengths. Yeah. If it's if your strength or your passion is, is still teaching, then play to that and bring in somebody who's, who's a really good manager, a really good coach, who can bring out the best in your franchisees that maybe you can't. I know for me it was a very big hurdle because I let my ego get in the way. I developed this system and franchisees coming on, if they'd slightly questioned it, I'd be defensive and passionate about it because that, that's where my passion and my skill lay. So it's, I've worked personally on that though, but I've brought in a okay. franchise. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I decided to bring in a franchise director to, who was great at that. It's not that I'm not involved in, in my franchise sector, I'm very heavily involved, but you have to play to your strengths and know where you are best positioned in that in that hierarchy. So it's flexible. Yeah. 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 Making sure that it is profitable. If the class isn't profitable, do something about it, shut it down or move it. Why is it not profitable? What's the, is it not enough marketing? And um, so you have to look at that and make your classes profitable. So instead of opening lots and lots of classes, have fewer classes, but with lots of children in the classes. That's a more profitable way to run your business. Are you talking from the franchisees or the franchisors? From the franchisors perspective, but you know, also this is a challenge that I would say most franchisors would come across or have come across, that they sometimes can't uh, compute the fact that the franchisees aren't as good as them in the early days. Yeah. And sometimes, even people find it with staff, how would you say you deal with those sorts of challenges 
if it's not going as well as you or they would like. I think it's down to recruitment yeah. again. Yeah. You have to pick the right franchisees, people that that you know get your brand and you know are going to be good ambassadors for your brand and therefore because at the end of the day no one's going to replicate you because no one's going to have the same passion as you but you want to find people that would have a good percentage of that passion for the brand and believe in it because then they're going to work harder at it because they don't see it as a chore it, to them it's something they believe in and, and as we know any business you find easier to run if you believe in it and you enjoy what you do and the long term success of your business depends on the quality of the franchisees mm. that you take on board that's really really important i think um monitoring uh, mentoring the franchisees mm. i mean that that comes back to um sort of you're talking about minutes ago about um, whether you you carry on running your own or you know it, it's it's a case of I think that that part also comes down to human and financial resources you and, and you may have to make a decision do I carry on or do I is my business now developing and building my network and, and, and working with my team to uh, build the brand and support the network that probably brings us on to our next question quite uh how would you describe the relationship with the franchisee in order for both parties to be successful? I think it's got to be um, a relationship of mutual respect. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Honesty, mutual yeah. respect, honesty. Um, yeah. Openness, yeah. openness, transparency. Yeah. Willingness to learn, willingness to ask questions, willingness to listen and to yeah. take advice. I think that's really important. I think you need to show empathy as well, yeah. but both yeah. ways yes. as well. It, it is a very strange relationship because yeah. you, they're not your employees, yeah. but they still need to follow the system. Yeah. So you've got to make yeah. sure that they're still following the system, and mm -hmm. and it, it can be difficult. And at time, you know, this there's, there's the stages, isn't there, in franchising as well, where you know they first come on board and they're really dependent upon you, um, and that they're soaking up every all the information they can. And then, and then they'll get into a stage where they start questioning and thinking that they can do it better. Um, but it, you know, the reason they joined in the first place is because you've got a proven system that works. You've got a strong brand and a proven system. So if you follow what you're saying, yeah. it should work. So, and then obviously they get into the mature stage yeah. where um, the relationships are much more settled and um, and and it's it's. You both benefit from that at that stage. They're they're doing well and um, they're not as needy. But you still you're probably coming up with ideas and sharing more ideas with you. I as think well. the relationship is key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think someone said to me once, it's like babies, toddlers, and then teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they get to the teenage yeah. And then they settle down. Yeah. Once yeah. 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 the Without coming across as patronising yeah. or yeah. 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 potential franchisees in the room but yeah you know it's, I, I would echo that you know you've got to see it as a as a long-term thing you want that franchised area to be there in 15 20 25 years time that's the real success in franchising yeah. and that doesn't come from short-term thinking it doesn't come essentially franchising is a relationship so you've got to make sure that relationship works What challenges do you think might be coming to the sector as a whole? Um, well, I don't think anybody knows the answer to that with what's going on when in the world it. today. <laughs> they? But um, well, I, activities, yeah, in general. I, I think um, dependent. You know, everything's so dependent upon the economy, isn't it? But I mean, I suspect that we're we're probably going to still see more. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but we're quite dependent on people, somebody being at home to a degree, either working part time. You know, there's probably going to be more people going out to work full time as, um, you know, you need two full time salaries coming in in some households. So that might impact. In the last 10 years, it's just completely changed. The business has completely changed. Mm. So there's going to be changes again, keeping up with technology and using marketing methods and, and so on. It's just keeping that. Stride of all that, keeping ahead of it. Yeah. I think I, I agreeing with the, the whole childcare factor, you know, with the government bringing in the 30 hours now yeah. that's being trialled, yeah. that is potentially going to drive a lot yeah. of our target market away because they are putting their children into um, into nurseries now. So I think it is about diversifying the business and maybe 
thinking ahead and, and looking at your, your target market as more preschools and, and nurseries now and, and can you go in there? Hence all the nurseries getting hit up on Monday morning. <laughs> 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 I'd like to save my business. With my mark from yeah. yes, right. <laughs> Any questions from the floor? Any franchisors or prospective franchisors? Got any specific or generic to say? Well, I, I just think I don't <laughs> Sue Heron from Patrick Bumpkin, and I'm always impressed, and uh, probably we should use it more as Patrick Bumpkin, is how the franchisees support themselves and the sort of buddying and how older franchises, you know, more mature, the, you know, <laughs> the <laughs> teenagers or whatever they are, <laughs> support the newer franchises because they can learn yeah. so much from each other. And then They've all come from such a diverse world. Yeah. And as Anne Marie said, you know, they can play to their strengths. So they might have some marketing experience or experience in big companies or things like that that can offer or teaching experience and they can share those experiences amongst themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we find that they talk to each other on yeah. through Facebook. Yeah, and, you know, exactly. We've sort of got a Facebook page for yeah, the front so really, yeah. 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 They're going to talk anyway, so you yeah. might yeah, talk yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, be, and be part of the discussion. But yeah. I completely agree that peer-to-peer -peer support mm -hmm. is really important because they might value the input of a peer more than the back mm. cost franchise or yeah. 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 But, but a good franchise or helps manage that yeah. process we and have align a, them with the right people. Yeah, we have a group forum, group private forum on Facebook that we as head office are involved in, but then we encourage um, all of our local franchisees to have their own separate groups away from head office where they can speak freely and and share best practice or, or grievances and then um, whoever feels relevant can bring that to us. But we do anonymous uh, surveys of all our franchisees as well to, get, because it's anonymous, they can speak completely freely uh, on this survey and give us feedback on how we can develop how satisfied they are. Um, so that's a Smith & Henderson company, they do that for us and that's, that's invaluable it does feedback. It really useful. Yeah, it really is. Helps you make changes and make things better. Yeah. Make things better. Like the accreditation process, yeah. as a franchisor, you want to know what your weaknesses are, what people aren't happy with, and look to grow. You can't be stuck in your ways. You've got to look to develop and, and grow yeah. and make your company the best it can be. And the CAA wasn't necessarily designed to act as an accreditation for franchisors because there are organisations out there that do that, but I do think it adds a lot of value to your prospective customers. Yeah. that you are a CAA yeah. member and committed to those sort of things because they might put more stead into that than they do the BFA or mm. AFA or anything like that. Questions? Any questions? Okay. Don't let him miss out again. Doug. Lots of questions. Uh, hi, my name's Doug. Um, I run a tennis uh, 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 academy and I'm a franchisee but only an element of my business is a franchisee. So one third of my business is, is in the TOTS market, if you like, and that's my franchisee element. Now, I was just listening to what David said a moment ago about um, the stages that you go through and you know, you, you, you're kind of educating your franchisee to get into a certain point because they're not your employee, yet of course they've got their own business, if you like, albeit your idea. Um, I think it's much more of a partnership type scenario because I look at myself as a franchisee, it's not my whole business because I have another element to the business as well which is all the older children and adults etc. And what I'm developing within that space, I'm educating my franchisor and they're taking information from it. They've come up with a fantastic idea, yeah. a really good idea, but sometimes it needs someone other than that franchisor to market that idea forward. And that's yeah. what I think we as franchisees are doing. And I just heard the panel speaking very much from a very franchisor point of view. And let's not forget that the franchisees are, are, are a huge part of this. I and, think uh, that's what Sue was saying, yeah. that they're coming from all different backgrounds and that's what you have to be as a franchisor, open 
and have that two-way communication so that you are always listening to your franchisees who come and have strengths that you as a franchisee don't have.